your hands to him. Raise your hands to him. Right now, healing is going to begin to come upon your body. Wherever you are, from the back to the front. I saw a wave of healing and deliverance that's going to begin to hit. Those from the pain of abuse. I saw those who were attacked when it comes to the womb. I saw the angel of the Lord beginning to touch that part of your body. And cause a breakthrough to come. For the winds of healing is beginning to blow. And the breath of healing is beginning to flow. There is one that is sitting with cancer that is here. The finger of the Lord is coming on you right now. And the Spirit of the Lord is beginning to move out and touch that area where the doctor said it is impossible. For the Lord is saying, is it not, is it too hard for me to do? Is it too difficult for me to touch? For you will see me touch that area. I saw people in their backs and their necks beginning to get touched. Let this place be covered and washed by His blood. I pray for the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ to flood this place. Every disease, every illness, every infection every abuse every area of darkness that right now the blood and like a wave is going to begin to come where you are sitting begin to move and begin to touch for right now you'll feel a sensation upon that part the angel of the lord when you felt the weight coming into this place it was the angel of the lord coming with his glory to usher into his presence many of you are still in the place of his throne room right now you will see visions and have visitations you will have encounters it is here where the oil is poured out it is here where the rock will pour out for you rivers of living water and rivers of oil that is going to begin to come upon your heads it'll be like hot oil touching your head right now for the lord is saying tell them i am setting them free even in the back i'm breaking the yoke of bondage i am breaking the chains
Just let the presence flow for a few more seconds. This is bringing healing to many that are here. How many of you sense his presence? Just raise your hands. The Lord is touching your body. the Spirit of God going right through your body beginning to bring healing and the pain that there has been for many years the Lord is saying I'm uprooting it tonight for even the loneliness that you have experienced see how I will enter into your life my daughter because the pain and the hardness of even the things that many don't know of the abuse and things that has happened that has caused you to become silent in an area and said, I'm going to block this memory away. The Lord is saying, I'm about to put my finger. I'm bringing a renewing and a refreshing. I saw healing going from your legs to your lower back, up to your back. And I saw the Lord is saying to me, I will cause her bones to be moving again. Where the enemy wanted to do something with the blood, I am touching it, says the Spirit of God. Set it free there now. Set it free. Set it free. Set it free. There you go. This thing is going to lift from you right now. It's going to lift from you. There you go. Come, 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 come. This. Jesus can heal you. Do you believe it? I saw him coming right into your back. With the MRI scan, we decree that the will of the Lord is going to be done. The Lord said to me, I'm bringing health to her body and I'm extending her years. You will have an encounter when you leave this place. You will have an encounter. As you leave this place, the Lord is going to visit you.
moment, those who are in the building, and you're saying you have in your body pain in terms of bones, problems in the bones, whether it's your back, your knees, your neck, I want you to get out to the front, come and stand here immediately. The Spirit of the Lord is here to heal. Also, if you have cancer, I saw somebody's body in a lot of pains all over there with their bones. Come. say to me what is your name what is your name? do me the Lord said to me do me. I looked and I begin to go in and the Lord said to me what this one has done tell her the one that has taken advantage I'm removing out of her life and then I will begin to bring the treasure out that is inside of her I saw your face going on a publication. I saw your face being seen somewhere, whether it is TV or radio or a, 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 a magazine or something like this. But I saw the Lord is beginning to lift you up because there is something that comes from the womb where the enemy wanted to come for you when you were at the womb. And they said, let us get rid, let us do something to cut this one off. But the Lord is saying, I've kept you by my right, your right hand, my daughter. For the spirit of abandonment that wants to take here from generations before and generations here after it is ending in your life the attacks against your body is ending in your life but the Lord is saying I saw the cross around your neck and he said you are my daughter, not only are you my daughter, you are my bride. And I will vindicate you. I saw a financial increase. I saw you walking into a bank. I saw you walking into a bank and I saw a blessing coming. Then I saw a shift when it comes for the Lord is saying there's an inheritance that is going. I look at a piece of land from family. Even this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing family from far. I'm seeing words of family from far. And the Lord is saying I'm going to begin to bring a healing and a restoration. Because there was a lot of attacks or a lot of things that were said. But I'm going to begin to shape her and change her. And I will use her for my glory. I saw a voice coming out of her. I saw her worshiping, I saw her ministering, I saw her preaching. And the Lord is saying, I'll touch your hands by my spirit. And right now I'm healing your body. And the spirit that came in the night and in the terror by night, I'm removing this night from your life. In Jesus' name. Now, sit for now. Now. For there's going to be a shift within 12 months with your life. And I'm doing this thing from a womb. 
because I looked at this image of a fetus that the enemy wanted to come but the Lord is saying I'll raise you up as the beauty of Zion never look at yourself as bad or never look at yourself as ugly or never look at yourself as evil this one this man listen to me now I am removing him says the Lord and I will bring one close to you the desire and the dream that you have had you will see my will come to pass there's going to be deliverance here raise your hands we are raise your hands there's a lot of people that need healing what's going on here can we let the spirit of God work can we let the spirit of God move okay this is worth 10,000 sermons I don't have to preach my sermon Okay, I see it's here, then ushers, then okay, 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 okay. Who in their backs, wait, this man with the black shirt, sir, I see this Spirit of the Lord on you the whole time. Come stand for me. Four. Yes, come stand. Just stand. The Lord is about to do a great work for you, for the regret and the, and the shame and the pain is going to be removed. I saw an attack when it comes in the work in finances. The Lord is saying, there is freedom that is coming to you in a powerful way. You can experience the presence of God tonight. The enemy wanted to remove you and you had doubts you had confusion hitting you you had discouragement hitting you confusion hitting you saying is it worth it is it worth it but as you're standing there I saw the Spirit of the Lord right behind you and the Lord said to me to tell him I have never left him nor forsaken him I have never left you nor forsaken and as I was even in a time of great darkness and shame that the enemy wanted to bring to you. Right now, I'm going into the crevices, my son, and I'm healing these things because I will make known to you the heart of a father, says the Lord, the one that was never there. And I'll make known to you my presence in a way that you've never known it before. For even as you leave this place, I saw the Lord visiting you. I saw his presence tangibly upon you. The Lord is saying, I'm going to remove pain, but not only this, where they, the people wanted to leave or the enemy wanted to come into the family and bring a, 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 a attack, a disbursement by the spirit of the living God. I pray right now that you will see a miracle this night. And the Lord is saying, I will do this for you. Not only this, even in finances, I'm going to bless you. And you'll see a turnaround and a change. For I remove the clock and the spirit of delay upon your life. That the enemy has put. Because you were supposed to enter into an abundance quite a few years ago. But the enemy has made you go around a mountain that was never meant for you. And I command breakthrough and the rushing of waters. <sighs> I see family I see family or like siblings or somebody like that somebody in family that is taken and completely taken by alcohol and a spirit of alcohol and the Lord is saying I will begin to bring deliverance and I'm gonna to begin to bring healing for even this root that wanted to come into your life I'm gonna bring healing some because there was a limitation when it comes to certain things but it is because the heart was not fully healed 
and now you will know me on another dimension. And know this this night, that as you felt my presence, it was my angel by you, says the Lord. And it was an angel that I have assigned to you that will protect you all the days of your life. And this one has protected you even from car accidents, even from robberies, where they try to threat your life. For the Lord is saying, I will breathe upon you a breath of fresh air in Jesus' name. If you are here in front and you, 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 with your back, you, uh, with your back, your neck, you have a limitation of movement, meaning you can't bend down, you can't move, and you're in tremendous pain right now. I want to take one step forward for me. Come take one step forward. Take one step. Ushers, just help them if there's even somebody in the, in the aisle. Get them through. Come through for me.
Is the pain gone? Yes, the pain is gone. In your in your back completely. In my now, back. yeah, in my back. So, come come with come walk, take my hand. Come walk with me. Let's carry on worshiping. Because oh, you your knee. Give Jesus a praise offering. Next one. What's wrong? Raise your hands, raise your hands, those we're going to pray for right now. As we lay hands on you, ushers, I want you to work with them, test them, let the miracle be worked. Say with you, working the miracle. So receive it and begin to move that body part that, we, that you could not be able to move or that they were pain. So with you, say, Heavenly Father, right now I receive healing. I know I am healed at the cross fully, completely in Jesus' mighty name. Say with me, say every spirit of infirmity, leave my body, leave my life in Jesus' name. I receive divine health. I receive movement in Jesus' name.
you will always be holy. holy. And he said, since you prayed for him, he has no pain at all in his body. Come on, church, can we give Jesus Christ a better praise offering? And she said, when she's standing in front and you prayed for her, just felt the heat and the pain is gone. She can bend right now. Come on. <laughs> Completely gone and healed. In Jesus' name. But this lady had osteosis in her knees. And as you can see, she's very happy that Jesus took all the pain away. She says he had this pain since he was 12 years old. He's turning 54 now. Oh. So, Prophet, I've got Norma here. She had a stiff neck since 2010. 14 years. I chipped my neck bone in a car accident that rolled three times. And tonight it got healed. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord Jesus. You can do better than that. Can we give Jesus the glory?
prophet I have Cheryl here, right here. Cheryl was in a car accident twice. She was in a car accident twice, 25 years ago. Her spine curved and she's been on medication. She, she had pain when she came in here and she just felt the heat as you prayed for her and she's the pain is gone. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yes, We've another testimony of here. This man came here with lower back pain and with neck pain. And he also says that he wasn't really able to move his hips and rotate like that. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, like it was quite stiff and I feel quite a, a hotness in here. Um, I couldn't move to the side. I actually went for x-rays last week. And yeah, I didn't agree what the doctor said. Um, but yeah, I can move side to side and I don't feel any pain. So. anything I was standing here don't tell me anything I was standing here and the Lord has pointed me to your heart well, I, I, you came to my chair uh, about a year and a half ago and you said I had serious illness and you brought me to the front here yeah. I see I, what I had serious illness yes because I had five suicides here yeah. I had four heart attacks since 2018 and I had two nervous breakdowns I haven't worked for six years. I'm looking for work now. They've declared me fit to work. I remember this. That same faith I've got in what happened here. Because now it's God. He uses you. You still ask me if, yes. if I believe you're a true prophet. Yes. And I said yes. My wife has been struggling for 14 years with high blood pressure of over 200, over 100 and odd. No medical situation can cure it. Um, we've been evicted out of our house end of the month. That's pushed it up higher. She has got two lumps in each breast, or she's got a lump in each breast. Doctors said a year and a half ago they're not even going to do tests. It's not worth it. So we do not know if it's cancer or not. And I said to her, we're going to take a step of faith today. And because she couldn't come yesterday, I said, I'm going to take a step of faith and bring her with again, because she often comes, and that she will be healed like I've been healed. Even, even Pastor Stefan, walked up one morning and said there's a young there's a person being taken out or what's going to be taken out because his father died prematurely and it was me and i've never ever i'm on one tablet i was on 15. Amen. stretch out your hands towards him i take authority over the spirit of death i rebuke you
may you be loosed from her life every spirit that drains life force out of her I command in the name of Jesus Christ life to come into her body life to come into her blood I curse every illness every sickness the lady that testified tonight about her arm being broken she was stage four cancer they gave her three months left to live she's still in front of us 35 kilograms weighing 35 kilograms and she was instantly healed she began to eat for the first time in months and now she's a leader in the church touch her by the power of the holy spirit i pray thousand generations are falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all have gone before us and all will believe or sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Oh, it's the greatest. Your name stands above the above all, above all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands.
of Nick and he couldn't move it. He battled. What happened? Um, I, I, I take photos. Sorry, I work for ESCOM. So I'm checking out all the problems on the, on the, on the, on the, on the big towers. So I must look up all the time and take photos of this. And there's crystals that come loose in my neck, so I couldn't move it anymore. So now I can... since the age of 13 right now he says he has no pain can you show us how you can move can you go up and down the stairs is there any pain no there's no pain just stand there where you are standing there stand there look at me the lord is saying to me that there's a call of god upon your life that you have run away for for very long for i have run off to you says the lord son there's a ministry call upon your life there's a mantle that has been in families even long before you. And the Lord is saying you can run and you can run, but you cannot hide. And I will use your mouth as a voice of evangelism. I will cause you to witness, testify, cast out devils, says the Spirit of God. For rise up and I will plant you, says the Spirit of God. For where you are right now, even when it comes in work or finances, it is not what I have for you. And you're gonna see a shift beginning to take place. I have not left you, neither forsaked you, but I will promote you, says the Lord. And the winds of change is beginning to blow upon your life. Touch you, Jesus. man couldn't lift up his arm can you show us how far you could lift it originally over here can you show us what God has done in your arms and then and then prophet we have another testimony here of this lady she had a pinch nerve all the way down from her neck to her shoulder into her arms into her hands and she was even wearing a brace she says all the pain is completely gone there's nothing there the nerve pain is completely gone Take yeah. it off, take it off, take it off, take it off. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise off. Come on, somebody! There's another woman here that's also had a pinched nerve, also says that it's gone, completely gone. Fingers, arms, everything. Thank I, you, Lord, it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. I hear your voice in this holy place, calling me to seek your face. Oh, Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh. Crying out. 
you, church. Oh, the oil, the oil. Oh, a fresh anointing. Oh, we are. Prophet, I have right here of Carol Ann. For five years, she struggled when she used to breathe. It was very painful. And right now, she can breathe. Do you want to explain what it was? Yeah, um, so five years ago, I was actually in a hospital with obstructive airway disease. I nearly died, lost my job. Um, and I've struggled to like sort of breathe from here up. It, it would be a, a labored breathing for five solid years. And for the first time, and I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to take medicine. I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to sacrificial tithe. And I'm trusting you for this tonight with everything I have inside me. And I can breathe. I can actually breathe. Amen. Oh, Lord, Come on. You've got to pray.
quite cracked it was swollen she had blisters the doctors couldn't explain what it was she couldn't um, bend her uh, uh, fingers and wow. she's healed over yeah um, I've been on medication I've had creams and things but it just did not work so I get these blisters then water comes out and I have all these cuts on my hands and I I couldn't work properly I could look here I couldn't do this Wow, come on, let's give Jesus a praise of Come on, praise and praise and make it the Shout of praise in this place. Wait, 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 wait. seats but stay stay a focus upon him stay focused upon him you know, if the presence of God is um, is here there's nothing really for me to say um, except just do what the Holy Spirit has told me to do yeah. say with you the fear of God yeah. say with his sensitivity I'm going to be preaching because uh, we're going to still pray for people. There's a lot of needs right now. Um, close your eyes for me wherever you are. Just raise your hands to the Lord. The fear of God was so strong on me earlier when His presence came in. Some people might not even be able to discern it because they have lost sensitivity 
for His presence. They've lost the ability to discern for His presence. Say with me, say, Holy Spirit, touch my life afresh. Give me spiritual sensitivity to sense your presence, to discern your presence, to feel the movements of your spirit, the movements of your presence, the winds of your spirit. I receive spiritual sensitivity in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to minister to a few people. I'm not going to get into the word. How many of you were touched by his presence? It just came in. That is it. It just came in. Last night we preached. Well, last night uh, it also came in and then we ministered. But um, I want to minister to some people here. Let me just see. So, so you were the hand raised that you were just talking your testimony. Do you, are any of you working right now? Do both of you, yeah, do you have work? Sorry, I haven't worked for six years after I had the sudden heart attack. I had no previous um, illness. It just hit me one day, twice, two heart attacks. They said it was anginous. And then I had three widow makers, which they told them to get the family in at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. And Tigerberg, Kurtisky, no one wanted to operate on me. They said it's, it's past, it's gone, it's finished. Um, I said I'm going to hospital, but I came to this hospital, and then <laughs> past, uh, after Pro Prophet Leon prayed for me, I said I'm coming to this hospital, and then past uh, Stefan mentioned there's a young person who was going to be taken out before his time, because his father was, uh, and it was myself. Since then, I've had no heart issues. I, I still suffer a bit from anxiety because of nervous breakdowns afterwards. A lot of it's got to do with I haven't had income for six years. My son is working four jobs to try and keep us going. Uh, he can't anymore, so they've evicted us or told us to leave the end of the month. So we've got nowhere to go to, but we trust in the Lord for our outcome. Um, Have they evicted you now? Uh, they said at the end of February we have to be out. Um, I lost my house, everything, when I got sick, someone... It's a long story, but in my... Can I mention it? In my brother's church? No, no. no. Okay, sorry. In a church where I was serving, sorry. Uh, in a church I was serving, uh, they helped me out, but I lost nearly half a million rand. I lost my house, I lost my vehicles. So we've got nothing. We've got three chairs left out of our whole house. You got what, three? Three chairs left out of our whole house we used to have. My son can hardly keep up trying to make up the rent. That's besides food and that. The church helps us a lot. The Lord told me, I should, as you were standing there in front, that uh, I don't know what the amount is for the eviction, okay? But I'm going to give you 10,000 as a sign to show that God loves you. Because I saw the angel of the Lord standing by you. Right there from the beginning. So come stand, come stand here, both you and your wife. And this is a sign. Go get me money. If it is in the safe. I was, I was told to fight the eviction. Well, they actually gave notice and said if we don't go out, they were going to go the eviction route. Um, I believe it's not the right way because that's not how I as a Christian has been brought up. 
um, I would, we would look for a place to stay under a bridge or something. I just don't believe in that. I know it's wrong, but I faith God would look after us. That's why my concern was her with her high blood pressure and that. Um, state hospitals don't even want to look at the breasts. That's what the lumps, but we believe it's healed after tonight. We believe it's healed. Um, they just felt and said, uh, we're not going to take care of it. They wouldn't operate on me. They said, I went for one follow-up and they said, you'd never have to come back because there's nothing we can do for you. It's six, 23rd of February, six years, I collapsed. I lost my business. I lost everything. Uh, we've got one car that we borrowed, my son, that he does four jobs. He's 36, he hasn't had a life of his own because he's too scared to leave the house in case I collapse or she collapses. She can hardly walk to the kitchen some days. That's how weak she gets with the blood pressure. But we believe it's healed tonight. We, we, we declare it healed. So, I brought her, we come often, as often as I can, I thank Andre and Carmen for giving us a lift, and I thank Beatrice and Benita for also helping us. And um, I believe I'm going to get job offers. I've put in 50, about 50 um, uh, CVs. I get no replies. I'm, I'm, I, I'm a facilitator. I've been in an aluminium business for 20 years. I've got all the qualifications. Everyone says they're looking for, but they just turn me down. So it's a nightmare, but I still keep on praising God. I have, I have had backslips, I'll be honest. I have now and then said, like this morning, uh, this morning she had to have medication. She told me this morning she, she hasn't got, and I followed past Stefan's message in, in Christorp, where you said, you don't go to Jesus and say, ach, oh, Jesus, please help me, please, this and this. I dreamt about that as well. And I commanded through the sending, I said, God, I command you to send me the money now. I sent the message to two people specifically that I knew would not help me. They gave me enough that I could buy some groceries as well. So I know God's hand is on our life. I know what's been spoken over me. And I know I would love to work, but I would also love to be part of ministry. I've got a love for kids, for young people. They have a church. They're going to give you 20,000 as the number of redemption. It's from Redemption Church. So it'll be 30,000, but you can get ahead in life. Is that okay? So that you can get ahead in life. Because, so it'll be 30. So we get 10, 20 from Redemption Church to bless you. Because I saw the angel of the Lord. But before you go anything, the Lord said to me, you had a ministry from a very young age. We were supposed to be called to ministry, but it was stolen, taken from you. It was robbed from you. And the Lord is saying, I have not forgotten you. And I've not forgotten the word that I've spoken to you. And I've not had any involvement with what man tried to steal and taken away from you. For the Lord is saying, I'm bringing a redemption, a restoration. May the seed be like a seed of redemption upon your life. I fully believe life is coming back to your wife. Death, the spirit of death tried to take her. She will not go. She will not die. Death tried to take you. So this is 10. This is 10,000. There you go. The 20 will come on top of it. So then you'll have 30. Prophet, prophet, prophet. I watch prophets service on Sunday, on Tuesday, the last one at Kreisdorp, where, where you said, if I can, 
you said Ephraim, Messiah, Manasseh, and you said his cross is in hands. hands. Yes. And I got so excited, I stopped it. I ran to the kitchen and I went to her and I said, I replayed it. And I said, this is my life. I've been suppressed for 40 years because I was at a kitchen table when I wrote a service on, I think it was John 3 verse 16, for God to love the world. And it was thrown back into my porridge bowl and said, you nothing. I won't say who did it. And I believe I've been hidden away for 40 odd years. But when you mentioned, prophet, that the hands are switching, I took it and I claimed it. Well, there's a shifting and a changing. And the abuse and the heading away that took place, many of it was not to do anything with the Lord. But the enemy had tried to steal a certain thing. But God is saying all things work together for the good to those who love Him. Three years from now, there will be a brand new life. Listen to me. You will testify, you will witness, and you will minister healing to people. And you'll be, a, you'll be a sign as the healing power of God. I found my house of God, and that's here. The Lord is going to set your family free. He's going to touch your family in many areas. Where is... Oh, you said your son is working. My son, your son is working for you. He does hockey coaching. So he works from some days from 2 o'clock till 11 o'clock at night. He's got two, two teams he coaches. He's got two clubs, he co teams he coaches. He's got 33 private lessons that he gives class to just to make up money so that we can eat and have a house over. Um, and I feel it's unfair to him being 36 years old and... He, he has not had a life. He has not had a life. May the Lord turn everything around here. I cannot do anything. This is just the power of God. And if I've seen what I've seen, and I see the angel of the Lord standing by you, he has mocked you. Your heart is healed. Other areas of your life is healed. I believe you are going to get work that's going to bring income. And then at the right time, the Lord will shift where you will testify and you will have a witness and you will have a ministry. But it's going to bless you with the work and the open door that is going to come. He will testify and he will tell me when it happens to you. I'm not saying, he, I'm saying he will, meaning it's a prophecy. Yes, I'm saying I'll give okay. them tomorrow a perfect plan. Yes, a perfect, amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise of to be able to preach, but uh, we want to pray for you. Um, I want to pray for specifically for, uh, we're going to be specifically praying for leaders. In fact, let me just do something here. So the sensitivity. Let's go, to, let's go to John chapter number 1 verse 10. John chapter number 1 verse 10. We'll be quick. Not here to preach the sermon, but I'm here to just drop a thought with you. Just to drop a thought with you. Read this with me. Say he was. Let's go ahead. Read it. And the world knew him not. Say with me. Knew him not. Meaning he was in the world. And the world was made of him. But yet they could not sense that the one was standing by them. There are times when the presence of God can come and we are unable to discern or sense Him. And let me tell you the one thing. So I want to drop this one thing the Lord said to me. When a visitation is limited is when a root of bitterness is springing up in the hearts of many. Uh, give, me, give me that verse, Pastor Stephen. Uh, Hebrews, I think it's Romans. Romans. 
uh, unless unless you fall short of the grace of God for a root of bitterness springing up, defiling many. Google it quickly and put it up for me. Hebrews 12, verse 10. Hebrews 12, verse 10. 15. Looking diligently, lest any man, let's read it, say with you, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root, and thereby, Put in the New King James for me this verse. Or let's put in the New King James. Let me read it for you in here. Let me read it again. It says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. Say with me, trouble. And by this. Say with me, by this. By what? By the root of bitterness. Many has become defiled. The one thing that the enemy does to bring to remove people out of his presence is a root of bitterness. Meaning grace is available. Grace is full. How many of you know you are washed by his blood? We are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's what did I say I used to preach when we were preaching last year and we're going to do a conference this year? There will be, absolutely, and I might step on a golden cow, there will be no Christian in hell. Listen to me again. There will be no believer that is genuinely saved in hell. Jesus gives eternal life. He is not a scam artist and he comes and promises you eternal life, but gives you temporal life. He gives you eternal life. And when you receive him, it is a done deal. Say with me, it is done. As easy as what it is to get saved, it is to get healed. Meaning the moment I believe on the finished work of the cross and I believe heaven is my destination, Healing is my portion. That healing was already done upon the cross. Are you guys with me? Sensitivity. So people fail sensitivity in the presence of God. Because they have a root of bitterness springing up. And it says, by this, many become defiled. And the Lord said to me, I want to stir a move. But many becomes defiled. What happens when they come out of religion? Do you know how many people are sitting here where you were being preached legalism and Moses and you were being told to do, do, do. Yet the new covenant says, done, done, done. Help me with the sound. The sound doesn't sound good to me. Say with me, done. It is a new covenant, meaning that the moment where Jesus stood on the cross, And he said, it is finished. It was the moment that any work ceased in your life. Meaning that the Bible says, the book of Colossians says, that the handwriting of requirements has been wiped clean about you. There is not one requirement but to believe on his name. It is a new covenant. A lot of people live in the new covenant promise with a condition of an old covenant upon their lives. And they're saying, I I will get this, but one, two, three. I will get healed, but one, two, three. Oh God, please heal me. No, no, no. Say with me, I am healed. Say with me, it is done. Listen to me. The people that we're praying for that are getting miracles, they would drive on their way to church. And on their way, they would already begin to imagine, I am healed. When the lady with the issue of blood, she said, if I can only touch, if I can touch only the hem of his garment, I know, put that verse for me, is it Luke 5, somewhere, get it to me and put it in the Amplified C version, if you have that. But it says this, 
Jesus was walking. And as he was walking, he turned around and he perceived. Say with me, he perceived. Meaning he sensed power leaving his body. And he turned around and he said, who touched me? Meaning that the Lord didn't even know whose prayer he was answering at that moment. Are you guys with me? Go one verse back. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years, so the 12 years, came up behind him. And we're speaking here about the press, the slipway anointing, the breaker that goes before us. Uh, the Lord of breaks, the Lord of Perez, going before him. And the moment you slip in behind him, it is like you're getting into the slipstream of the anointing. When you used to drive a motorbike, guess what? You're getting in behind a truck. The moment you get in behind a truck, it pulls you to go faster. The moment you get into the slipway of the anointing, what happened with Jesus? He was walking. He had a prayer shawl, and I'm not going to get into it, which was called the mantle or his rope. And as it was hanging, he was in the slipway of the anointing, and the woman came up behind him. She had suffered for 12 years. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. Next verse. Say with me. Read this for me. Say four. Hold on. She kept saying to. So she was saying, sitting. And she looked the Lord walking past her. And she said within herself. And her lips began to move. And she said, if only I can touch. Not Lord, please heal me. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would uh, heal me. No, no, no. If I can touch the hem of his garment, I know I emphatically am fully convinced if I can touch his hem, not him, just the hem, I shall be restored to health. Next verse. Jesus turned around, seeing her, Say, take courage, daughter. Your faith, say with me, your faith. Meaning, this woman came to a place where she answered her own prayer. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. They say, realm with God, where is the faith realm? It is not a matter of asking or begging. It is, say, God, if I get here, I know this will happen. And she touched him and pulled power out of him. And he had to say, who touched me? For power went out of me. And she had to say, it is her that got touched. Meaning that she said within herself, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I will answer my own prayer. Meaning, God, I'm not giving you an option. The Syrophoenician lady that came behind Jesus. And, it, and, and, and she came to the disciples. And the disciples said what? They said, get away from us. Uh, uh, push. I'm not getting into the into the theological side of the scripture right now. And then they went to Jesus and he said, look, the, the children's bread is for the lost sheep of Israel. Meaning, woman, according to the Gentile rule, you are a dog. Move away. It is not deliverance and healing is not for you. I have come to the lost sheep of Israel. It is for them. And she said, but even the little dogs eat the crumbs of the... And she said, I am a dog. Please understand this. People get so upset. Why must I be in such a long service? The Lord is here. If you could not see Him healing how many, then people would sit, but oh, this is nonsense. This, this, this. If you were in that condition, with a knee condition, with a lady that got healed with a knee, you will know the pain that it was for how many years. Those who have loved much, or has been forgiven much, loves much, those who have encountered him in a realm. When I was here, the presence of God came in so strong. When I got on my knees, my heart was pounding. The last time I had this was in Namibia. Where the fear of God came in. That I could not lift my head and look up. Because where there's an open heaven, and how many of you know where's an open heaven? Say with me, in us. 
that when the heavens are opened, I saw visions of God, said Ezekiel. That when your heaven is opened in you, because Malachi said what? I will open you the window of heaven and I will pour you out, out of your belly, out of an open heaven in you shall flow out. So what was happening when Jesus was walking? It was the heaven that was open. He was the stone that Jacob rested his head upon, that the angels were ascending and descending upon, that the moment Jacob's head touched the stone, the heavens were opened. Now that rock moved with the Israelites in the wilderness. And if you would see an image, you would see a rock moving with them. And they would camp, and the rock would be there. The, that's what's written and then they would move again and then it says a rock moved with them obviously Christ but think of it are you guys with me and what happened when Moses beat at the rock anyway a lot of people want to beat Christ when they can speak what did the woman say she said I will she began to open her mouth if I could only touch, if I could touch. And he was walking, carrying an open heaven. And as he was walking, carrying an open heaven, she came into the vicinity of an open heaven. When Peter was walking, the Bible says that the shadow of God was on him. And his shadow would fall upon people. And as his shadow falls upon people, they begin to get healed. It is the substance of the anointing. Yet we think those stuff has calmed down somehow when we're in today's church. No, 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 no. There's a lack of hunger for God. There's a lack to press into the presence. Say with me, a holy hunger. Listen to me. A lot of people get pride and they sit and they're waiting for God to perform. How about you pull him till he's in this place? Or you open yourself till you let him out. For Isaiah says, arise and shine. For your light, say with him, my light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. It is his glory that will come out of you. But he's waiting to open up a heaven that is inside of you. To open up your belly so that rivers can begin to flow out. He said to the lady at the fountain, he said, if you can drink of this water, the fountain of life. You will never thirst again. And she said, Lord, give me of this water. Say with me, give me of this water. I'm just quoting now, but the scripture is there. He said, I will give you of this water. And if you drink this water, you will never thirst again. She goes on, she says, give me of this water. What did he do? He prophesied. Are we preaching to encounter or an ingekark? Say with me, prophesied. She said, give me this water. And he said, you say you have this and this husband. Well, I say you've had five. I say this. He began to prophesy. Meaning prophecy is a living water that comes upon you. When that living water begins to come, it has the ability to open up an inner man in you. What does prophecy do when we prophesy to you? It is not, oh, I got a word, I'm so great. No, no, no. It is a light in a dark place. It is a light that will shine upon a dark place. It is rivers of living water that will come out of you. Meaning that for prophecy to flow, it requires somebody to pull, to place a demand. A prophet hates to release a word upon somebody that doesn't want it. Are you guys with me? How many times have I had people that come to us? They're like, uh, uh, hey, what is God saying? God was in this place tonight. He is in this place, but His manifest presence, His visitations, He has made His abode in us. 
but he visits in a manifested way in pocket store and he's about to be poured out in this city in a very great way stand for me come stand here where's your wife is that your wife back whose womb I need to pray for you can't have children and if it is you I just want you to stand up wherever you are you need a breakthrough in in giving what do you call it giving birth don't be shy right now it'll happen right now stand up Flow rivers, rivers of living water. Out of my belly shall flow. Just raise your hands, just raise your hands. That couple there, just a couple, raise your hands to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command your womb, I command the spiritual womb or the spirit behind the ability to not give birth and not be fruitful to be opened upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. And this limitation that has come in, that has tried to grab and stop the seed from germinating. May there be freshness that come upon you. Because I looked and I saw a seed coming and the Lord is saying to me, look and see for a sun that shall run, says the Lord. There's something very precious upon your life. Very precious upon your life. And everything that you have done for the Lord. Many years. For the Lord is saying, I've not forgotten your work for the saints. But you will see greatness coming into your family and your seed seed. And you will be a strong pillar here and in the society. For there is a work, there's something you have to do. Because I saw you in the years that lie ahead, I saw you holding a microphone. I saw you teaching and I saw you ministering. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to increase business and I'm going to stabilize this family financially. For the enemy has tried to come in with doubt to you and has tried to come in with discouragement and thoughts of bewilderment, thoughts that try to just, there was these things 
that clarity is going to come. But the Lord is saying, I am not like a man who look upon the outside, for I am the Lord that looks upon the heart. It's like I'm standing in the month of March and then I'm standing in August. It's like I'm by 20 March. Wait. I'm standing seeing the month of March and I'm moving and I'm seeing August. Where are we now? We are February now. I'm seeing things that is going to shift. How many children do you have? Two sons or daughters. Two sons. I see. I don't know if it is in the family or in the children or in the in brothers or sisters or something, but I'm seeing, when I look on your lives, it's like I'm seeing somebody teaching. I know I just said to you now that you will be ministering and teaching on the mic. Seeing somebody teaching, I'm seeing somebody in like, is it medicine, nursing, medical? Medicine. Our younger son studying medicine. What is he, what is he He's do? in his sixth year at Stellenbosch. Okay. He's going to be a doctor. Is he, in a, is he married? No. Not married? Not the younger one, no. Only the older one. My oldest son. Is he married? I see a womb opening. for one of your children. I saw a daughter, like a young, young, young girl, like a granddaughter that is going to come forth. For the Lord said to me to open the womb as I'm standing here. And God is going to use both of you in a very powerful way. I saw this mantle coming upon your family and I saw you laying, laying your hands on your children. Is your son in a relationship or not? Not the younger one. Single? Yes, single. Okay. Yes. Not in a relationship? No. Okay. The Lord is going to use him greatly. The Lord is going to use your other son greatly. The younger son, there is going to be a shift. It's going to be like a desire for a geographical shift. It's going to be a change that is going to come in. But I saw something like an entrepreneurial spirit upon one of your sons. Dylan. Who? Dylan. Dan. Dylan. Dylan. Our older one. Is he? Yeah. Is he here? Yes. Stand up for me. Is only your one son this year? Yes, Cameron, okay. he, live, he lives in Worcester. He's okay, come, yeah. come, come, yeah. <laughs> what? Why don't you say, why don't you stand up when, when I was prophesying? So, entrepreneurial? Or what did I say? Sorry? Yes. What, did, I, did I say that? Okay. I see a womb opening up. Do you have children? No children. I see a daughter that is coming because I saw a granddaughter running around. The Lord is saying, I will cause you to preach with an anointing and a fire. Evangelize, deliverance, healing upon your life. For I am shifting some things from the past because it is like you'll be like a firebrand that is going to go out. And the Lord is saying, do not underestimate what is upon your life, son. Because finances is going to increase, but I'm cultivating you in time. And then I'm going to use you both in the area of ministry and ministering out. I saw campaigns. I saw 
uh, charity, so I saw preaching, I saw, I saw uh, deliverance, healing, the gift of healing upon your life. For the Lord is saying, do not step to the left or step to the right in making decisions. But the Lord has been with you from a very young age, has been with you, this family from very young, because there is a covering upon you. And my wind and my breath is going to come upon you. But where the enemy try to bring a thought, God is saying, I'm going to cause you to have the mind of God. You will know what decision to make. You will know whether to choose to go left or to right. Because I see this family standing as a pillar in this house. And you will help a stability. For the Lord is saying, I'll shift many things and I'll change many things. Your youngest son, the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon him. I saw something with traveling that is going to open up. It's like he's going to begin to speak about it. In the next year or the next two years, he's going to mention and speak about it. And I saw an opportunity come for him where the Lord is saying, I'm shifting him a little bit to something, but property is being released. And the Lord is saying to me, get ready because there's a financial blessing coming for you. And you're going to step into something in the next two years. For you have desired ministry. And the Lord is saying, my desire that I've put upon you is going to bring a fruitfulness out of you. But listen to my voice and hear my voice. For I shall use you and then I saw nations that is going to come in the future. Many years from now, I saw nations touching. I looked at nations. I saw nations in Europe. I saw nations where the Lord is saying, I'm going to use you. For do not underestimate this word. I will clothe you with my armor. I'll clothe you with the anointing, says the Spirit of the Lord. And your womb, I pray for an openness to come because fear has tried to come in and voiced something to this couple here and there was a bit of sleepless night there were things that are happening but what the enemy has desired to divide I will not allow to divide says the Lord of hosts I will bring a closeness and I will restore you back and I will fill you with fire says the Spirit of God Jesus name. for with you I pray for your son that divine inspiration will begin to follow him and it will begin to cause to go into the will of God fully. But the Lord is saying, this couple I will use. And the hesitations and the discouragement and the dis little bit of discontent. I'm going to bring healing in your body. I'm going to cause pain to go. And even when it comes to sleep in his nights, I rebuke this in the name of Jesus Christ. But there shall be a financial... Jesus name. and I will cause I saw you with a microphone I saw you teaching I saw you doing something with your microphone I saw you helping assisting teaching ministering pulling people is teaching already or not offerings but I saw you teaching really teaching I saw something that you've desired for long that is going to come into fruition I saw you laid out something and you will pick up the son of promise upon your life. Give me one more minute, one more minute. Glory, glory. With your jacket, stand for me. Stand here. Come stand here. Come stand here. I saw on a photo just before I came into the service, I saw you walking in there by a door. They posted a photo. And I looked at your jacket and the Lord told me, as I looked on that photo, the Lord said, tell him, <clears throat> stretch out your hands towards him. I see a change in a location. I see a change in an area. I saw a decision that was made that was not right and correct. I saw a decision that was made that was not right or correct. But I will restore and I'll bring a correction to it. Because 
Be very careful of a wrong voice, says the Spirit of God. Be very careful of a wrong voice. There are people that don't have a good intention. And there are those that have a good intention. But there are those who don't have a good intention that want to take advantage. I have called you, son. And I'm going to cause the lines to begin to fall into the right places. But I will speak to your heart and you will know where and which way to go, says the Lord. Lift them up one more time. Lift them up one more time. Let the glory come on. Lift them up one more time. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Fill them afresh. Fill them afresh. I worship brown jackets. Come stand, come, come stand here. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. Come a little. Spirit of God is doing something brand new and fresh upon your life. For some, do not be shy. When I walked past you there earlier, the Lord whispered to me and said, Tell him, do not be shy because I will cause you to prophesy. I'll cause you to see with a prophetic eye. But you have the ability to deposit gifts. And I will trust you with the embodiment of my spiritual gifts. For I looked and I saw healing. I saw prophecy. I saw the preaching of the word in evangelism. And then I see, you know, the Lord said to me, He will plant and He will plant many. And He will plant churches and then He will move. Not only at this location, but I've shown you like a map, says the Spirit of God. And like I have caused an eagle to fly high, so I have caused you to fly high. And there will be a lighthouse where you are planted, says the Lord. Many will come to you, but right now the grace has not yet been to the place of a measure and a substance. For there's training that is going to come. But the Lord is saying an apostle you will be and an apostle you will move. But you are young, says the Spirit of God. But I'll take your ship and the winds of sail and I'll cause your ship to be moved. And you'll be like the Spirit. You'll go left and you'll go right. Lift him up one more time, lift up one more time. I pray for grace to increase, grace to increase upon your life. The measure, the rule. I pray for signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, 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 now. Fill him now. Fill him now. In Jesus' name. Seek me like you have never sought me before. For there's a call on your life from the age of five. And it's like I'm standing at the age of five. I saw the Lord visiting your bedroom. And as the Lord visiting your bedroom, I saw visions that was given dreams that was given and I saw a grandmother or some mother figure that was praying and I saw the word of God being watched over in your life for the Lord is saying I shall raise you up son for there will come the temptation of offense and there will come the temptation to move and not knowing where to go and what to do and the Lord is saying I'll be your guider I'll be your protector and I'll comfort you in Jesus mighty name Let's stand to our feet, wherever you are. Let's stand to our feet. I want to do one more thing. The presence of God is so strong, it's like you don't know what to do in this atmosphere. So, should I do this or not?
I want all the leaders, just the leaders, to come and stand here in front for me. His presence. Raise your hands. I can really, I can work, I can go on till I can just lie in His presence. And the Holy Spirit is strong. There is nothing impossible tonight. That section there, just raise your hands to the Lord, that section there. I see the Spirit of God there. There, there, there it is, there it is. There it is. I saw the angel standing there by that person there that just fell. Zasko evrekonoska elebroska alekenoska edenemeska dekenamasko avrekene. I can't even see that far. I just saw a light coming on that person there. And they went down. Vraha auske evrekenoske re. Zoska aleske de beda mambroske de ketena maya. Zavroska areke de lebena mambroske de. There's an angel there, right there. Those who are sensitive. Raise your hands, 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 raise your hands. Touch! There, there, there. Deliver them and heal them there. He will feel someone walking past you there. That young man with a blue shirt, God is going to use you. Right there, you have like a light blue shirt on. The Lord is going to use you. I saw a business coming to you. I saw a business opportunity coming. And then I saw you like walking. I can't even see that far, but I saw you walking into a property. I saw things coming. And the Lord is saying, as you turn your heart to me, son, there's a restoration and healing coming that is coming in family for you. Where the Lord is touching family, healing family, touching relationships in your life. All the leaders, where's all the leaders here? Are you guys here? For the sake of, uh, I was going to prophesy over Pastor Stephen and Pastor Jackie, but then I thought, no, they got a lot, a lot of prophecies. <laughs> But a lot of <laughs> they got enough. Here I am. <laughs> because there's a flow that is going to come up, but the Lord is saying, protect what I've started here. Because as you are standing here, 
Are all your leaders allowed to lay hands? Pray for people? Okay. So, I want them to, I'm going to pray for all of them. I'm going to pray for import, so with importation. And then I want them to lay hands on everybody else. I want Gail to take the microphone, get the guys after, directly after I pray for me, to get them to do a ring of fire. I want them to lay hands because there's power in multiplication. And that you can get your eyes of the man of God and turn your eyes upon Jesus. Many of these healings was not us, it was these people praying for people. Are you guys with me? The disease of South Africa many times is that we're looking for one person. And we think and we actually replace what God can do with one. Yes, God anoints people. Yes, God works with people. Yes, there are special gifts. But there's a time where the river flows. That God works through His body. So we're going to lay hands on them. I want them to lay hands on all of you. How many of you are saying, I want to have what I experience in this house. I want to have more of it. Stay and let them lay hands on you. As we do a ring of fire always. Go around the building. Everybody stands. Or however you guys deem it fit. Pastor Stefan. But I pray right now. For the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Give me oil. Stretch, stretch out your hands towards those that is here. The Lord is saying, protect the thing that is here. Don't let the root of bitterness come into your hearts. I didn't even preach a message tonight. Because the presence of God was not going that way. It was here to release and what we are doing right now. He wants to multiply and anoint His body. It doesn't matter what healing you need, what deliverance you need. It's going to happen right now, tonight. The atmosphere is still here. And for every leader that is here, I pray for the supernatural power of God. For the Lord is saying, Peter and Gail, you have kept your hearts pure. And I'm going to shift you and the Lord is saying, be patient, and I'll make you a ruler over many. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. But I've called you to cover and protect. I've called you to stand in this place, and you will see the promise of God. And Peter, what you saw your family reap, and when they many times thought it was them, the Lord is saying, there was a David's that they have assumed that is not there. There was a son, there was a hidden one, that everyone thought it was them. But the Lord is saying, I have reserved one on the backside of a desert with the intellect, with the skill, with the desire, with an ability. And the Lord is saying, do not underestimate what you can do for the anointing and the measure is going to come greater upon your life. <sighs> I can never before, says the Spirit of God. No. Stretch out your hands like this, leaders, like hold it like this. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the anointing will be transferred, will be imparted to them, that they will lay hands upon those who are here. I command the anointing to move and work on their behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the river begin to flow. Anoint their hands in Jesus' name. Touch, touch now. Oh, your name is holy. For your name is holy. Holy. Oh, 
Stay in front, stay in front, stay in Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, stand up. There's something you need that you haven't told anyone. There's something you need that you haven't told anyone. And you have flown in all the way. Because you have not told with a breakthrough that is required. A hidden thing. I saw a breakthrough that is required when it comes to family. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to answer your prayer. Then I'm going to bring one along your side. But do not be hasty with certain things. Be led by my spirit, says the Lord. For There's a desire for ministry or evangelism or stuff like that. But I am birthing you for something else, says the Lord. Something deeper, something greater. Because you have one thing on your mind, but I'm bringing a greater thing, says the Spirit of God. There's a creativity. I see a voice coming out of you. It's either like singing or like preaching. Singing or preaching. And then the gift of healing is going to flow through your hands. But I'm healing your body. I'm touching something in the family and I'm bringing breakthrough in family. Because I see something that is wanting to be lost. Something that is at threat to be taken. And the Lord is saying I'm touching. Even as I'm standing here, the Lord is touching your womb. The Lord is touching your body. And the Lord is saying I'm going to fill you with a greater importation. Even as you go back, I will set you ablaze. I saw you going to one and two or three different nations. I saw you doing something. And the Lord is saying, I will guide you by my spirit. I will lead you by my spirit. And then I will use you. For I saw you standing and I saw you like singing or preaching or singing or preaching. And the Lord is saying, I will put a voice in your life that is going to lead and direct and will help you with guidance, says the Spirit of God. For I pray for importation of the prophetic tonight, like never before. I pray for your eyes to be opened. Look me in the eyes, look me in the eyes. Open your eyes, look at me. Lift it up one more time. Trust me, there's something called the Kavod glory, which is a weight.
For I will protect you. <clears throat> I will protect you even when it comes to relationships, says the Spirit of God. Be careful of wrong, be fearful of wrong, for I have appointed the right thing to come, says the Lord of hosts. For he will be like a warrior that will go before you. Then I saw that relationships will be shifted and things are going to come right. I will open up your womb, says the Spirit of God, in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's give him a praise offering, church. Come on, let's praise him, praise him. I want you to take your belongings. We're going to pack up all the chairs, bring it to the center. And then we, as the leaders, we can come and anoint each one of you. So please take your bags, pack up the chairs, ushers. Please help bring the chairs to the center. And let's do a ring of fire. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There is no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Behold, He comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. And a trumpet told in your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. They're not going to fall without anybody catching them. Make sure he's an usher. Be These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of Elijah. Space of the people out. Space of the people out. I hear your voice. In this holy place, calling me to seek your face. Come on, church, let's sing it out. O oh, Yahweh. O oh, Yahweh, let heaven come. Each usher must have an usher with him. We're not going to drop people ashes. Each leader must have an usher with him. Lord, have your way. Oh, let it burn. Let it
a line in front if you have not been prayed for. And ushers, you can also come. Ushers, if you have not been prayed for, come to the front.
have not been prayed for, please come to the front. Give God the highest praise. You've got that open heaven. You are a carrier of His glory. You've got the fire of God in you. So go and give the loving waters to everyone. Be a messenger, a healing. So bring healing, bring salvation, bring a deliverance. Give God a praise. Come on, because you're an atmosphere changer. You're a shifter. Praise Him. Enjoy a cup of coffee and be safe. And go change atmospheres wherever you go. Amen. In Jesus' name.